What's up, Fantasy Football Funhouse fans? We are back on the Fantasy Football Advice Network, powered by the Fantasy Sports Advice Network. This episode is set to be a good one because we are breaking down the playoff push in the segment, The Fundamentals of Fantasy Football. And in the superpower game of the week, we have an electrifying matchup, so stay tuned to find out what it is. Enough talking, let's get this party started. All right, everybody, welcome back, heroes and heroines, to another episode of the Fundamentals of Fantasy Football, where we break down the game and equip you with the superpowers you need to dominate your league and while keeping things fun and easy for beginners as we enter the crucial part of the season. The stakes get higher and the challenges, well, they get tougher. It's time to begin your playoff push. And every decision you make could either make you a champion or leave you in the villain's trap. So grab your cape and get ready to outsmart your opponents with these superhero strategies, whether you're trading players Playing the matchups or preparing for injuries will guide you through the next few weeks like a true superhero preparing their final showdown. Let's get ready to rise to the top. Let's go, Mason. What are we going to talk about first? The playoff push where your superhero journey begins. In the world of fantasy football, making it to the playoffs is is like becoming a superhero. Right now, you're in the middle of the season, and the choices you make in the next few weeks will decide if you can rise to the top and become the ultimate champion. Or you'll fall into the villain's trap of missing the playoffs. Imagine you're the superhero of your fantasy team. Each decision is your superpower, and you need to use it wisely to to conquer the challenges ahead. If you prepare like a true hero, you you'll be ready for the battle when the playoffs when playoff time comes. So don't get hung up on the big names. Even superheroes have weaknesses. Every superhero has a weakness. So do the big name players in fantasy football think of players like Josh Allen and Saquon Barkley as the superheroes of the NFL with big reputations. But just because they're famous, it doesn't mean they're the best options this season. Even Iron Man has had some tough battles. Instead of blindly following the names, look for players who might be flying under the radar. These are the hidden heroes who can come up big when you need them the most. Keep your eyes peeled for the players who might surprise you, just like how every hero has a breakout moment. Remember though, Saquon Barkley, and Lamar Jackson, they're unbeatable right now. They're the superhero. So you're looking for guys that aren't so uh, well known. Okay. What's the next step here, Mace? Trade with the bottom ranked people. Some teams are stuck at the bottom of the rankings, but that doesn't mean their players aren't good. It just means that they're not performing up to what you thought. This is your chance to be a superhero and make a smart trade. Just like a hero who recruits new sidekicks, you could trade with these teams and get strong players who need a new home. Even if your friend's team is in last place, you could help them with a trade and get a star player like Jamar Chase in return. Use the villain's weaknesses to your advantage and make your team stronger. Gotcha. So... Keep track of the bye weeks. They're coming and they're going. This next week coming up, we don't have buys. Week 13, because of Thanksgiving, no buys. But the bye week next week, 
continues to grow and uh, you got to be ready for it. So every superhero knows when to strike. A part of being a fantasy football champion is knowing when the villain is off guard. In fantasy football, that's when a player has a bye week. While other team owners scramble to replace their players, you can swoop in and pick up a star who's just waiting for a chance to shine bright. Imagine like finding the villain's secret weakness and just right at the moment that you need it the most. If you keep your eye on who's available, you'll catch these hidden gems that offer and, and, and you don't want to overlook them. Just like a hero always plans ahead, you'll be ready to take advantage of these opportunities. Now, Mace, what is another step we must take? Be ready for injuries. Yeah. Injuries are like kryptonite to fantasy football teams. Just like superheroes <laughs> always have a backup plan. You need to be ready when a player gets hurt. If your quarterback gets injured, don't panic. Think of like Batman losing his utility belt. But but quickly calling in Robin to help. Injuries happen, but if you grab a backup player fast, you can keep your team strong and ready to fight. Having backups is a smart move that can save your playoff hopes. No kidding. Now, play the matchups. Outsmart the villain defenses. So every hero knows that defeating a villain depends on a situation. You wouldn't fight the Joker in a dark alley without a plan, right? In fantasy football, this is like playing the matchups. If a player is up against a tough defense, it's like walking into a trap set by the villain. On the other hand, if you're facing a weaker defense, it's your chance to shine like a Spider-Man swinging into action. Just don't go by name recognition. Use your superhero brain to choose the best matchup each week. This is how you outsmart the villain and rise to the top of your league. Next, I the waiver wire. Discover hidden super superpowers. The waiver wire is like your superhero stash of secret weapons. Every week, there are players who aren't on any team that can become your secret weapon to beat your opponent. Just like heroes finding new gadgets, you should look for hidden gems. Maybe a player like DeAndre Hopkins who gets traded and becomes a star. This is your chance to grab them before anyone else. Keep checking the wave wire for players who could give your team a superpower boost. We talked about like um waiver priorities last week last week and that was a great show. So I'm just using that logic there. Yeah, no kidding. I like that. So don't fall for one week wonders. So not every villain is worth the battle. So sometimes a player will have a huge game or week and fantasy managers start acting like they've discovered a new superhero. But beware, folks, not every one week wonder is worthy on your team. So these are players who have one great performance, but then vanish into the shadows like a villain who disappears after a quick fight. Before you rush to add these players to your team, wait and see if you can keep their powers going for another week or two. Like a hero who doesn't trust every villain they face, you shouldn't trust a flash in the pan player either. Stay flexible. Superheroes adapt to changing battles. Even the strongest superheroes have to adjust when things change. In fantasy football, you can't just keep playing the same players if they're not performing well. Think of your team like the Avengers. You need to swap players to keep your team strong. If you're in first place, injuries or bad matchups can still mess up your season. Heroes know that being flexible is important. If a player is struggling or injured, it's time to change things up and bring in some backup. Yeah, and understand your league's playoff system. That's a really important one to plan your heroic strategy. Every superhero has a different mission and every fantasy league has different playoff rules. So some leagues have a three-week playoff while others last four weeks. It is important to know the rules so you can plan your strategy like a real superhero who's preparing for the final showdown. For example, if your star player is a top running back on a team that's already clinched a playoff spot in real life, he may not get much playing time toward the end of the season. This like knowing the villains moves ahead of time. If you're prepared for what's coming, you can make your team ready to go when the playoffs start. 
And after that, it's your final plan for victory. The final part of the fantasy season is like the last battle in your superhero story. You've trained, made your moves, and now it's time to face your league's villains. But remember, even heroes have to adapt to challengers. Fantasy football can be very, very unpredictable. So while you should plan and make smart choices, be ready for surprises. Your strategy might give you a chance each week but if you stay flexible keep learning and focus on the prize you'll give yourself the best chance to win the ultimate championship and that's what we're all here for to do is to win fantasy championships and uh let's hear from our sponsor uh the fantasy sports advice network and a community that is growing every week so let's continue to grow that community let's hear from the sports network. We are here. We are here. Fantasy sports advice.com offering the best fantasy sports social media platform. Why join endless discord communities or the trolls of Reddit? <laughs> Fantasy Sports Advice is a community designed to help you win with 24-7 support. Go to FantasySportsAdvice.com and become a pro member for unlimited access. Again, go to FantasySportsAdvice.com today. That's right now, Mason. It's time for what? Our super-powered game of the week. The Eagles versus the Ravens. This week's super-powered game of the week in fantasy football features an epic showdown between the Ravens and Eagles, two teams packed with elite talent. The Ravens bring a dynamic offense led by MVP caliber quarterback Lamar Jackson, whose ability to both pass and run makes him a constant threat in fantasy football. Add to that electric playmaker is wide receiver Zay Flowers, who's quickly emerged as a star in his sophomore season, and you have the recipe for big points. The Ravens' offensive power doesn't stop there. Running back Derrick Henry remains one of the league's most dominant forces on the ground, capable of putting up monster yardage and touchdowns in any given week. Tight end Mark Andrews is another key weapon for the Ravens' passing attack, providing a reliable red zone target and high ceiling for fantasy leagues. On the other side, the Eagles are loaded with playmakers up playmakers of their own quarterback Jalen Hurts has established himself as one of the top fantasy QBs in the league known for a dual threat ability to score both through the air and on the ground at wide receiver AJ Brown and Devonta Smith are one of the most dangerous duels in the NFL each capable of putting up massive yardage and touchdowns anytime they see the chance to take the field Brown is a physical force who can dominate defenses while Smith is a precise route runner who's consistent target for Hurts. In the backfield, the Eagles have the hard running back, Saquon Barkley, who, when healthy, is one of the most explosive backs in fantasy, capable of piling up rushing yards and catching passes out of the backfield. Yeah, he's had an incredible season so far. It looks like he's... Uh on track to break uh, the yardage record, which is incredible feat. So with both powered offenses on both sides, this game is sure to deliver the fireworks for fantasy managers from Lamar Jackson's electrifying plays to the dual thread of Hertz and his talented receivers. Every player in this matchup has the potential to put up huge fantasy points. Whether it's Derrick Henry bulldozing through defenses or Saquon Barkley making big plays on the ground like his reverse hurdle a few weeks ago, you can expect a fantasy football feast in this game. It's a high-stakes, high-reward matchup that has all the makings of a thrilling week in fantasy. Yeah, buddy. I can't wait for this one. You know, this could be a Super Bowl preview. You never know. So, uh, yeah. High-flying offenses, count me in for that. Now, Mason, let's get into the heroes and villains, and I'll let you start us off. This week, my hero has to be Nico Collins. Nico Collins just got off of injury, and he's and he was fantastic both weeks. He's going up against the Jacksonville defense, who is the worst in the league against yards, and he will be dominating with passes, especially with Stefan Diggs out for the season. And... Yeah, 
Nico Collins is going to be an, a great fantasy option. So I just I just love his matchup because they have no star cornerbacks on that uh, Jacksonville defense. Sorry. So yeah. All right, there it is, Nico Collins, folks. Hero of the week. So my hero is Bucky Irving, and you know, thanks to his impressive week twelve. He's got a favorable matchup this week, despite even sharing the backfield with the villain, Rashad White. Irving has proven he can be a reliable fantasy contributor, both rusher as a receiver as well. His workload is increasing, and the Buccaneers offense has got strong potential. Irving is ready to continue his upward trend. So let's continue that. A versatile skill set. A growing role in the offense, a great matchup. Uh, Bucky Irving is set to get unleashed this week. So if you got him, you got you're in for a treat. Irving is the rookie who's ready to break out and carry your team to victory this week. What do you got for your villains, Mace? I've got Calvin Ridley. He's set to be the villain of the week for fantasy football in week 13, and he's facing off against the Washington Commanders. Washington has one of the top defenses in the league against the pass, making it difficult for any receiver to rack up significant yards or touchdowns. Ridley will be up again, up against an uphill battle to produce solid fantasy points. Yeah, and to make it matters worse, who's this quarterback? Will Levis, who's been somewhat inconsistent at best this season. He's struggled with accuracy, often throwing questionable passes that could lead to turnovers, and we don't like that, do we? With his interception woes, it's likely the commanders will capitalize on these mistakes, making Ridley's fantasy potential even further in jeopardy. This combination of a tough de defense and a turnover-prone quarterback spells disaster for Ridley in Week 13. His inability to break through Washington's defense, paired with Levis's risky throws, could make him a major liability for fantasy managers. As the ultimate underperformer this week, Ridley's fantasy owners should brace for disappointment. Mm, that's bold, Mason. I, I have a hard time, to, you know, benching a guy like Ridley, but if you say so, I'm going to do it. All right. DK Metcalf is my villain, and he's stepping into that territory this week. And, you know, fantasy managers should brace for disappointment against the New York Jets. Despite his physical talent and past dominance, Metcalf faces one of the toughest defenses in the league, and the matchup could be more kryptonite than superpower. The Jets have proven to be a nightmare for wide receivers, and with Sauce Gardner set to sh shadow Metcalf, it's hard to see him breaking through. While Metcalf is always a threat, his struggles in high-pressure situations combined with a formidable, formidable Jets defense suggest a difficult outing for the Seahawks' star. Yeah, one reception five yards the last time they faced sauce garner in the jets the jets allow only 27 fantasy points per game to all wide receivers combined so that's not great 1300 receiving yards allowed this season so the jets are just a really tough defense and uh you know four catches for 59 yards in week 12 against a much softer arizona defense showing that metcalf has struggled to produce even in more favorable matchups and jsn is emerging as well so yeah this could be a week where the villain gets shut down don't be surprised if Metcalf's performance leaves you feeling like you've been outsmarted by a crafty antagonist. So let's get it, Mason, into our last segment, our fun segment, which is what? Top fives. This week, it's going to be hobbies. I'll go first. My number five is playing hockey. I love playing hockey, and I've got a hockey practice. Soon. Yeah, so, yeah, you sure do. So, Mason, uh, you were from Canada, and hockey is a really popular sport up here. So, yeah, cool, man. Um, my number five would probably be fishing. I enjoy fishing, sitting down by the dock of the bay, you know, casting a line and catching a fish. What's your number four, bud? Coin collecting. I love coin collecting. I've been doing it for a year or so. My grandpa gave me his old binder and a bunch of coins. So, now I've got I've got an 1860 something penny and it's American too. So mm, I love to cook. Um, that's my job, my profession in my real world. So I love to be a chef. I am a teacher and uh, yeah, so that's going to be one of my other hobbies is cooking. 
My number three is playing football, not fantasy football, actual football. I'm, I play quarterback, and I'd say I'm decent at it. I'm trying to get better at catching because I'm not great at that yet, but I'll, I'll see. We'll see. Cool. All right. So then my number three would just be, uh, you know, hanging out with you, playing, playing sports in the backyard. Okay, my number two is fishing. I absolutely love fishing. I got a ton of fishing lures for my birthday. Cool. And, uh, yeah, I just love fishing. And I, the satisfaction when you catch a fish is just... Mm, yeah, oof. I love it too. Uh, so my number two would be playing playing cards. I love playing cards. Gets my brain working. A lot of fun. And then, of course, what's our number one? Fantasy football. Let's go. All right, folks. Thanks again for tuning in to the Fantasy Football Funhouse on the Fantasy Sports Advice Network, powered by the Fantasy Sports Advice Network. It's always a pleasure having you all here. Hopefully you're doing well in your leagues and you're starting to learn a little bit more about our sport. And uh, remember where to go. Go to the Fantasy Sports Advice Network. Get your pro membership. And uh, today, we uh, over through the weekend, we've got a Black Friday deal on our merch store. So be sure to check that out. And... Uh, yeah, folks, uh, from all of us on the Fantasy Football Funhouse, what do we say, Mace? We hope you win. We hope you win, folks. Enjoy the games this weekend, and we'll see you in week 14 for the primer. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>